when it is summer in a desert biome, you take refuge from the sun anywhere you can get it. So today I'm back with another Jurassic World Alive video. And I know it's been a little bit, but uh, that they're still going to happen. So don't worry about that. Uh, first things first, we have these treasure chases. This one's going to end in three hours and nine minutes. So I'm definitely going to take the coin out of this. 37.50 is always beneficial as you can see. I'm really low on coin right now, but there is a very good reason for that, and that is because of the topic for today's video. You will see there's a new dino on my team, and there's a dino that I'm really enjoying, and I will say that if you are running Dio Raja, and or if you're running Trichosaurus, this particular dino might be, it might be overkill. It might be too much of the same thing, and kind of what I'm trying to determine right now is, is that the case? But we have a legendary hybrid that is going to be a mix of Wooersaurus and this Carna or Pura Taurus. <laughs> and it is going to form together to give you the Carnotarchus. I kind of like it. I've, I've like put levels into this. I've put boosts into this. Its speed is not normally 128. Mine is, but it's at speed level five. So you can see I put quite a bit into it. Damage tier level five. And then for health, I'm at four, just waiting to get up to five. It is going to take 200 Wooersaurus per fusion, and it's going to take 550, not 500. It's going to take 50 per Taurus per fusion on this Carnotarchus. The moves, superiority strike, which is going to just, it, it's just so good, especially with so many dinos out there that have like distracting abilities. Superiority Strike is going to be great for that. It's also going to be really nice for giving you the speed advantage if for only one turn That could be a very very crucial turn long protection. It's going to deal one times damage 50% defense for four turns, which is going to make it really nice against everything that doesn't have shield breakers Precise Rampage deal two times damage by passing cloak and evasive abilities I don't think you need me to tell you when you're facing those endos, when you're facing the Erlodoms, like, you want something. Like, there's just, and Yoshi. Like, Yoshi's MVP right now. And I'm going to be really sad when the day comes that Yoshi gets a super hybrid and they just nerf the crud out of it. It's, it's going to be a sad day because I've put quite a bit of resources into my Yoshi at this point. But when you're dealing with Yoshis, when you're dealing with Erlodoms, when you're dealing with, I've even seen a lot of Indominus Rex. So when you see a lot of those, or when you see the Indoraptors and they're dodging you left and right, it's a horrible feeling. So Precise Rampage is going to be the way that you get around that. And then you have Instant Distraction. It is a priority move. Your target's damage is reduced by 90% for one turn with a cooldown of one. And what is going to make this creature very similar to the Dio Raja, to the Trichosaurus that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is this Greater Rendering Counter Attack, which is going to be its passive move. Destroy Shields, nice, deals 33% of target's max HP as armor piercing damage after receiving and surviving a physical attack. So it's very similar, but it, it might be more versatile than Trichosaurus, just if I'm being honest. And I already think Dio Raja is more versatile, versatile than Trichosaurus, and I kind of feel like Carnotaurus, I don't want to say it's a poor man's Dio Raja, but it's, they're very similar. It's got some things going for it that Dio Raja doesn't, but they are extremely similar. If if you aren't going after Uniques, this is definitely going to be a really nice replacement for either one of those dinosaurs, really. So now that I've already talked this thing up and told you how great it is and why you should probably be working for it on your team, if you do need a counter-attack dinosaur, and I highly, highly suggest working some kind of a counter-attack dinosaur onto your squad, it just comes in so handy. And this one is extremely versatile versatile and uh, the more versatility you have on your strike team like the more figures that you have that aren't one trick ponies I think the better off you're going to be in the battle arena so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hopefully actually yes I'm thinking in my head that I'm doing the battle arena I'm like hopefully I, I pull this but I'm actually not I'm going into a strike tower so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pick my Carnotarchus 
and any three randos. I feel pretty confident that my Carnotarchus is just going to wreck these, these Pteranodon. Lot to like about it. I think it's a really good dinosaur. Not that difficult to come up with the components. Pretty much everything that you can get to make this creature is going to be something that you can get out of your alliance. So remember that, but also remember that a lot of people may be asking for DNA for this because it is so readily available within the alliance. So this is the, what is the, the Sungarptris, the Sungarptris, which is a, a like a, it's limited. <laughs> it's like an award, a tournament award, um, or I can't remember how she got them. You can get them through these strike towers or it was a, a reward for one of our seasonal tournaments many, many, many moons ago. Definitely no problem there. I really like the, I like rampage moves. And if you can put boosts into any figure that has rampage moves, the more rampage moves it has, the better, because those are two times attacks. And now we're gonna have Pteranodon, which is going to swap in. Pteranodon isn't very strong. It's pretty much a glass cannon. So this is gonna hurt quite a bit for the Pteranodon, even with the swap in ferocity. That's one, that's one hit. Now it is a level 18 and of course, I'm way over leveled for this tower, but I mean, you can see that I'm, I'm still doing quite a bit of damage here. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw up a shield, which is going to reduce my opponent's damage by 50%. Superior strike isn't really gonna matter much. I'm going to do a counter attack for one third of my opponent's max HP, which is going to be 912. And then I'm going to do the rampage and we're just gonna call this a GG, good game. See you later, knock it out. Impact and run isn't even gonna matter because there's nothing to run to. And there you go, Carnotarchus, just making quick work of a relatively easy tower. Um, how it holds up in the battle arena for me, I'm, I'm like, I, I fluctuate. I'll, I'll lose a bunch and go down into the 4500s and then I'll win several and go to the 4700s and it, as long as I don't get a chomper or it, it holds its own, it really does. But if you start getting up against some of these chompers, it, it's, that's not what it was made to do. And I would say that that's kind of a weak spot of it, although it does have the instant distraction so it can buy you a turn and you're going to get a counter attack in. Uh, Dimorphodon, Hatsuko Objects, Hamburginia, <laughs> Scaf, Scaphognathius, Nathius. So there was nothing but figures there that I cannot pronounce. Those Pteranodons, I'm terrible with them. And so that is going to be your look at Carnotarchus. Let me know in the comments below. Are you using Carnotarchus? And do you like Carnotarchus? What do you think of it? I think it's good. Um, I wouldn't have it on my team, especially completely under leveled if I didn't think it was valuable. Uh, at team level, I think it's extremely good. Of course, a lot of figures at team level with boosts are extremely good, but I think it's a really nice component to a lot of people's teams. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. More Jurassic World live videos will be coming, probably not this week, but then starting like next week, they'll start mixing back into a normal type rotation into my channel. So I appreciate you guys hanging with me as you know, there are more than one augmented reality game and I'm enjoying all of them. I'm, I'm still really active. And in case you in case you were thinking that I just gave up on Jurassic World Live, I haven't. I'm still really active. I'm just not able to create videos due to time constraints, but I'm definitely not as active as I was where I played this many hours a day, but I'm definitely very active, especially within my lines. So content will be more regular probably starting next week, but I hope this tied you over. I hope you guys maybe discovered some new hybrid that you weren't previously using. That's all I've got for this one. So until next time.